So to create the typing effect you just saw on screen using vanilla JavaScript, you first of all need to go into your markup and create an element into which you want to type your text. I've given mine an ID of typing container. And in JavaScript, I've already selected that element by its ID and given that a reference name of output div. Now I need some text that can be typed out inside the container. And I did prepare some text already. So I'm going to place it inside backticks and the advantage of that, so inside template literal syntax is that if I wanted to make this string multi-line, I could do so by just hitting return and typing a new line. If you use normal quotation marks, you would need a special syntax for accommodating a new line. So that's the advantage of using backticks. And I'll save that in a reference variable of text. Now, the way that you can create a typing effect for some text is by calling the set interval function and by writing a letter at a time of some text into the container. So I'm going to call set interval here, and this takes two arguments. The first one is the function that's going to be repeated at the specified time interval, and the second argument is the time interval. So in this case, I'm going to set it to 50 milliseconds. So obviously you can play around with that and find a speed that works for you. Making the interval shorter is going to speed up the typing because the interval between the characters being typed out is shorter. Now inside the function we are defining inside of set interval, what you want to do is write each character one at a time to the output div. So we need to reference the output div and we want to write into it using in a HTML. You could also use text content or in a text here, but I'm going to use in HTML. Now I use the plus equals operator. So this is going to write HTML into the output div, but it's not going to overwrite what's already there. It's going to write in a HTML in addition to what is already in the element. So obviously it starts with nothing, but once you get past the first character in the text, you do want the previous letters not to be overwritten by the next one. So I'm going to set this to text i, where i is going to represent the index value of each character. So i is not yet defined. I'll do that above my set interval function. So i is going to equal zero initially. And so when this function inside set interval first runs, it's going to write the first character from text onto the page. And then immediately afterwards, what I want to do is increase the value of i by the value of one. That means next time set interval runs, it's going to get the second character and then the third character and so on. So this is going to partially work, but it will stop working as we want it to when it reaches the end of the text. So let's see what happens. So after a certain point, it gets to the end of the text and it's going to just keep writing undefined onto the page because we've run out of text. So what we want to do to fix that is to clear the interval. So it stops running when it reaches the end of the text. So in case you don't know already, when you call set interval, it returns on the same line that it is called the ID of the interval you have created. So I'll call this interval ID. And the reason I'm creating that is because we need that reference in order to be able to clear the interval. So you can clear the interval by saying clear interval and then passing in the ID of the interval you want to clear. But we only want to do this in one circumstance and that is when we reach the end of the text. So I create an if statement here and we want to check if the value of i equals text.length and it's when that is the case that we want to call clear interval and that's going to stop undefined being written to the page and it's also going to clear the interval so it's not running in the background. So as you can see, this is working and this is a perfectly fine solution if you have a single line of text and you want to write it inside an element. The problem is if you want to spread that text across 
for example, multiple paragraph elements. So to show you what the problem is with writing text across multiple elements, I've extended the text from earlier. It's still inside a template string and it's now multi-line. And I've also inserted some paragraph tags to break up the text. Now, if we look at the result of this in the browser, you'll see that this doesn't work in the way that it is intended. So the paragraph tags are being printed out literally. And also there's no break where we used a return inside the template literal. So if you want to write out text across multiple elements, you have to make some changes to the code that we were using earlier. So let's take a look at the code and make the adjustments. So the first thing to do would be to remove the paragraph tags from the template string. And instead, what I would suggest is using your own custom tag where you want a new line to appear. So for example, you could say NL for new line. It really doesn't matter what your custom tag is. You just need to make sure that it is at the end of each line. And you want to make sure that it's not something that could be mistaken for normal text. So NL, this kind of tag, there's very little chance that it's going to appear in the text. Now what you want to do is to call the split method on this string, and you're going to want to split it by the custom tag that you have inserted, and that's going to give you an array of strings. So in this case, there's going to be three items in this array which represent the three different paragraphs that I will want to write to. So I call the split method on text and my custom tag is NL and I'm going to save the result as splitted. Okay so now what I want to do is to create as many paragraph elements as there are items in my array. So to do that I can call the for each method on the result, which is splitted. And I insert the function in there. So the function runs as many times as there are array items. And each time I'm going to want to create a paragraph element. So I use create element for that. And after creating a paragraph, I want to append it to the container where I'm going to be typing out the text. So that would be output div and it's an element. So I use append child here. So what this means is that immediately there's three paragraph elements inside the output div, which I can write text into. So what I'll do next is select the paragraph elements that I've just appended inside output div. And I'll do that using query selector all and I'll save these under the reference name of paras. That means that they are now selected so I can start writing text into them. Now, just like before, when I was writing a single line of text into an element, I'm going to want to define the variable i and give it an initial value of zero. And I'm also going to want a second variable that's going to have a value of zero that tracks the current paragraph that we're writing into. So this time we're not going to be writing directly into the output div. Instead, we're going to be writing into the paras and specifically we want to be writing into the current para. So we're going to write HTML again, plus equals. What you're going to want to write inside of there is a character inside one of the strings that's in the splitted array. So it's going to be the string at position current para, and you're going to want to get the character at position i. And immediately after this, the value of i is increasing by one. Now, what you're going to want to add is a check here to see if you've reached the last character in the string and if that's the case you're going to want to increase the value of current para by one so you can do that by checking if the value of i is equal to splitted and you want to select the current paragraph within there dot length 
if that is the case, you've reached the end of that string. So you want to increase the value of current power by one, and you want to set the value of i back to zero, so it's getting the first character of the next paragraph. Now to clear the interval and to stop the writing on the screen, you want to do the if statement that you were doing before, but this time you want it nested inside of this if statement where the value of current power is increased. And the reason is that you're going to want to check the value of current power and you're going to want to clear the interval when current power, the value of it, is equal to splitted dot length. Okay, now before continuing, what I'm going to do is just make a small change to the code from earlier because I included a custom tag here at the end of the text and you actually don't need that there because that's going to split the array there again and there's going to be four items in the array. So I'm going to delete that now. So there's just two custom tags at the end of each line and no custom tag now at the end of the last one. So if I ran the code without that adjustment, I would get an off by one error where splitter dot length would be four and current para would only ever reach three. So don't overlook that like I did. You want to make sure there's no custom tag on the last line. Okay, so this code should now be working. We should have text typing across multiple elements. So let's see how it looks. So that's exactly the same as you saw in the preview. So that is how you can create a typewriter effect across multiple paragraph elements. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.